Ohayo minasan. You want to know the secret way of kneading a good dough? Then stick around until the end and you will see for yourself. Today I will be showing you how to make three different kinds of ramen noodles homemade uh, that we can use in the ramen. And as ramen has been our highest request so far, then I thought we might as well do it now. Um, and the noodles that we will be doing today is going to all have a different kind of texture depending on the flour that we're using. But all of the, uh, the rest of the ingredients is going to be the same. So it's just going to depend on the protein content of the flour itself. But let's we have one with 12% uh, protein, which is mostly used for breads and so on. And then we have a lower protein uh, content of 9% in this one, which is more used for tempura and for cakes and so on in the Japanese kitchen. And then lastly, we have a rice flour of 5% protein which is more used for like pho in the Vietnamese kitchen but also nowadays in the uh, ramen places in Japan because it's gluten free so because there's no gluten in it it's not gonna be as bouncy in my theory at least so I think the other two will do better like texture wise for the ramen but this one will be a lot more healthy the one with 5% uh, protein but we will see how the outcome will be Next. So when making the dough itself then you add in the salt with the baked baking powder that you combine with water. Once that's incorporated into the dough itself then you put in the uh, water little by little. And we like to use the chopsticks to mix it around because that's the technique the Chinese also use. And then once it becomes impossible to move around with the, uh, the chopsticks, then you can switch over to using your hands. And then once it's kneaded a little bit, then you can wrap it in and let it rest for 30 minutes. Once rested, then onto the table and there you can roll it out to a circle. You can of course chop it up in smaller pieces so you can manage the uh, the dough itself and it doesn't become super big so once you're finished with the uh, rolling it into about half a centimeter thick then you fold it like this and you can cut it and then you can cut it in around half a centimeter is what I like to do at least but you can decide on the thickness just remember that the boiling uh, it takes longer the thicker the noodle is and then once done then it should be stretchy like this because of the baked baking powder then you boil the noodles and you can boil those for about two minutes and onto the soup itself and then mix that around and then you have a nice soup with your choice of uh, vegetables. We chose uh, bok choy and some green onions and sesame. Put a test itself. Let's see if it lives up to the the worth. Hmm. It's very good. It's a very, it's a very hard noodle. It's a very dense flavor, and the flavor of the soup itself is very, very flavorful. I'd say there's so much going on in this small dish here. But yeah, I look very much forward to see what is up with the, uh, the actual ramen with tonkotsu. So if you haven't subscribed already, then it's an obvious choice to do it now. Um, so you won't miss the actual ramen or the actual tonkatsu ramen. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, so we have now made the first batch and we will go over to the 9% uh, the uh, flour. So we will be using that 
for now and then th it's the same ingredients otherwise but I forgot to mention like the reason why we're doing baked baking powder and not just baking powder is because baking powder has a pH value of around 8 where you know uh, normal water is 7 and then you have like you know acid coca-cola and orange juices and stuff like that between 1 and 6 and then you have like bases such as bleach and stuff like that uh, soapy water and stuff in like between 8 and 14 so we want it to be around 10 which is what we can get out of baking the baking soda and mixing it with a little bit of water so that gives it a lot more bouncy texture the noodles themselves um, so that's why we baked it but let's jump right into it again it's gonna be the same procedure otherwise so yeah a small noodle fact here, when you make the uh, fresh noodles from the scratch then they can last up to 4 days in the uh, fridge but also up to 2 months in the freezer if you want them to hold a little, last a little longer and the texture will still stay more, more or less the same. But the procedure is pretty much the same as last time with these uh, noodles here. They are a bit longer, but as you can see from the texture itself, then they still stay pretty bound. And this time this soup consists of miso and some black sesame seeds along with some other ingredients. You can see the rest of the ingredients down in the description along with how much you need to use for two portions. Then you boil the noodles for about two minutes and now once done then you just place them in the soup and you're done. Mm. It's a little bit less chewy than last time but it's super delicious with the, uh, the soup. It matches perfectly I think. It's very nice, very nice. So now we try the uh, the rice flour and as you can see it's a very different texture, it crumbs up very much compared to the previous ones and it just doesn't really stick together. So we have to take in and use the secret weapon, the Japanese way of kneading the dough which is stepping on it, yes. It's like massaging your dough with your toes. But even with our secret weapon, the dough is still very crumbling, like our dreams. Yeah. So let's tear up with some calligraphy instead. Uh, if you can guess what we're writing this time, then let us know in the comment section below. And if you didn't guess it already, then we are writing men, which means noodle in Japanese. So the dough now is a 50-50% of the baking powder and the, uh, the rice flour. So it is very mochi mochi feeling to it now. As you can see, it's very absorbent of the pressure that you put on it. So we will see how it goes when we make it, if we can make it into noodles this time. So as you can see, after rolling it out, then it's a bit different texture and a bit more white compared to last time. But you cut it out the same way. And then once you've done that, then you separate the noodles from each other and then you can start boiling some water for it. The texture is less bouncy as you can see there. And then this time we're going with a salt based ramen. The ingredients are in the description below again. So we've now finished the, uh, the last ramen um, and it is with a simple uh, salt based uh, sauce or soup and then we will try 
the last noodles here. As you can see, then they're a lot shorter now because they crack so easily. Um, but the most important is the flavor, I guess. So let's test. Mm. Yeah, it's very mochi mochi. Um, I don't know what to say. It's like it sticks very much to your mouth as well. It's like it doesn't have this this rubbery effect like the uh, the previous two noodles had. So this rice flour is not really something I maybe would recommend putting in. A ramen dough, yeah. But yeah, we could still eat it, I guess. But if you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for the upcoming ramen episode. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. Jane.